I have to start off this video by saying that this is not a book that I enjoy. This is a book that I had previously put down and DNF'd and uh, I decided to pick it back up again in order to make this book versus movie for you. Um, today we're going to be talking about All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven, which is now a Netflix movie. So yeah, I put this book down when I tried to read it, uh, probably when it first came out. I think I had it from a Waterstones 3 for 2, tried to read it, didn't enjoy it, gave it away, sold it, whatever I did with my books <laughs> then. Um, but when I heard that they were making a movie about this one, I decided that I would um, give it another go. I got the audiobook from my library um, and read it. Um, in case you are new here, I love making book versus movie videos. I completely recognise that once an author sells their rights to their book to any movie company, unless they are highly involved with the script, they basically have no say over what goes. It can be completely different and just have the same title as their book. Um, and I in no way anticipate any movie adaptation that I watch to be word for word exactly the same as the book. I, however, really like making the comparisons and looking at the way the script's been adapted and the characters have been cast. And I love bringing you a spoiler free book versus movie video. Um, I will leave my playlist linked up here in case you have missed any of my previous book versus movie videos and I do have a few more coming your way soon because I have a little bit more time to read the books and watch the movies or the TV shows. Right now I have a book versus TV show coming your way soon so you're going to want to subscribe so that you don't miss out and that lands in your subscription feed. Click the bell so you get notified and then you'll have more of my thoughts like this coming up. So I have made some notes as I was watching the film today. Um, firstly, I love that Netflix are doing so many like young adult book adaptations, but I do feel like you get the same character, you get the same actors casting them again and again and again. Elle Fanning does a really good job of playing that angsty teenager. If you haven't watched Teen Spirit, I really enjoyed that. Um, and she does it really well in um, this film as well. I also saw her recently in 20th Century Women. She does play very similar characters, but if an angsty teenager is what she does well, then angsty teenager should be what she continues to play. Um, and I really like the fact that she was cast in this film. It's not how I pictured Violet in the book as I was listening to it, but I think they've done really good job of the casting. I also um, really like um, Theo Finch. Um, his casting, again, He's been in other young adult adaptations, so I'm fam familiar with him playing a character that I've read about, and I think that really helps. But I think he was, he gave a really good performance in this film. It was very dramatic and very like changeable. Um, so yeah, casting wise, I love what they did. Luke Wilson's in this one. Um, we've got uh, Keegan Michael Key in this one as well, which is an interesting choice. And he plays a straight character, which we're normally used to seeing him playing a comedy character. So that was cool too. Um, but yeah, really liked the casting. Um, I think one of the things I really didn't like about the book either time that I read it um, was the fact that obviously it's quite triggering it deals with mental health it deals with depression it deals with suicide it deals with ptsd it deals with grief and i think that the book is very very full on in the way that it deals with all of those there's not a lot of like light and romantic moments everything's very heavy um but also it goes into a lot of detail about things which i think could be harmful to somebody who you know is dealing with any of those things um especially a young person dealing with any of those things. And I think that the film does a much better job of dealing with the mental health aspect of it, with suicide, with grief, with, you know, long-term PTSD. We have a character who is bulimic in there. We have characters who are obviously um, sort of almost bipolar when it comes to depression. Um, and I think that the film is almost it's not that it's more like upbeat but I think it dilutes it a little bit and so it's not as 
triggering as the book might be. Um, I would say once you get to 30 minutes remaining in the film, it definitely takes a turn and um, we see a lot more to do with the um, depression and the suicide aspects of the story. Um, but aside from that, I would say that the book, the, the movie is much more of like, this is just, you know, a sort of teen angst coming of age little bit of kind of road trip aspect there and a bit of romance as well and I think that the movie got a better balance of that than the book did. Um, that kind of brings me on to talk about the pacing a little bit. Obviously with a movie we've got a lot less time <laughs> to spend than I think the audiobook of this one was about nine hours. The movie is an hour and 40 minutes so the movie has a lot less time to introduce us to the characters and the setting and their backgrounds and what makes them tick. But I really like the fact that we kind of get straight in with the characters in the movie. We don't have a lot of like introduction and this is me and this is what happened and this is what I think about this. It's like, here's this character, this is their deal right now, let's move on with them. Here's this character, this is their deal right now, let's move forward. Um, and so I really thought that perhaps one of the reasons that I you know, put the book down the first time around reading it was because the pacing was quite slow and quite detail heavy and that's generally not my jam when it comes to reading but the, the film is a lot more pacey and a lot more like right okay we're moving on now here's where they are now here's what we're seeing now and we've got rather than the description of the setting obviously we see it on the screen and we've got this lovely like green indiana setting and they go to all these indiana landmarks and so i really like that about the film um, I think as well, they've thought a little bit more about the language that they use around mental health in the film. I think obviously we're a few years on from when the book has been released and so we do have more language to talk about mental health and we do know the stigma around, you know, the words that we use surrounding mental health and so I think the film is a lot more careful when it comes to talking about the way people are feeling and um, the things people are going through and the language which may, which may be triggering as well. I think the film does a better job of that than the book but again that could be because we're now a few years into the future and we, we do have a lot more awareness. We have all our mental health awareness days and weeks and months and celebrities talking about it whereas when the book came out it was one of the first young adult books to be talking about mental health in this way especially when it comes to um, suicide um so yeah as i say i really think that the film feels a lot more like a yeah sort of teen angst coming of age first love type of film um and it feels a lot less heavy than the book does the book is very much an issues based book whereas the film feels more like a general like teen this is where we're going obviously we have some emotional moments in there and i think that the actors did a great job of portraying those and not making those too over the top i really enjoyed that aspect and um there's a song that theo has in the film that i really don't recall from the book <laughs> i have literally just finished listening to the book um but i really really liked um, that aspect of it and I really like the way they filmed the ending as well the ending of the book and the ending of the film are pretty much similar the same again no spoilers um, but I like the way they they filmed the ending I like the way they set it up I liked the way Elle Fanning played it at the end um, and yeah so I would definitely say that I preferred the film over the book I thought the film did a really good job of um, kind of taking most of the essence of the book but turning it into a more accessible teen romance coming of age a little bit of road trip dipped in there um and I really enjoyed it and I think I personally even the second time around wasn't a massive fan of the book so I would recommend the movie over the book in this case my personal opinion and I'm not always saying that the book or the movie is better, but in this case, it's my definitive opinion on that one. Um, as always, if there are any books you would like me to read and then watch the movie and bring the comparison to you here, I've had requests before, I'm working on a couple of those and I've done a couple of those as well, let me know in the comments. Um, if you've read the book and watched the film, I'd love to know your thoughts as well. 
make sure you are subscribed so that those future book versus movie videos land in your subscription feed and if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up i will be back with more bookish content for you very soon so i will see you then